Good morning, me again, welcome back. Welcome back to some freshly fried hair. It's actually looking a little less fried recently, so that's good. Today, we're talking about another beauty standard that we've been obsessing over for ages, and that is height. Not fear of heights, but specifically, how tall you are. It's something that you can't really control. It all depends on your genetics and how many nutrients you got when you were younger. People that are above the average height are typically seen in a positive and bright manner. Mostly because you have to look up at the sun to talk to them, you need sunglasses and a 45 degree head tilt just to talk to these successful and blinding giants, compared to looking down at the ground where the short bugs live. Oh hey, that's me. I'm a bug. Is there a difference between putting 5 foot 10 and 6 feet tall on your resume? Well, according to society, there is. Height plays a big part in our lives, whether we realize it or not. According to research done by people that do research, taller people tend to get paid more compared to us floor peasants. They have more success with dating and pursuing careers in the modeling industry. Even the past seven US presidents were around six feet tall. I didn't know height was a requirement to run a country. It kind of sucks if you weren't born with the advantage of having very long legs and the ability to reach for things on the very top shelf. Someone keeps putting the bleach up there when I clearly tell them not to. But now, with our really advanced cosmetic procedures that are available to anyone that can afford them, things are starting to get weird. Reminds me of one of the great classic tales from the early 2000s, Spongebob, the episode where he took his date Pearl to the prom who was a whale, and significantly taller than him, since he is a sponge. Wow, the 2000s sure were weird. To fix that height difference, Spongebob had to wear a leg device to give him some extra height. And would you look at that, a natural and stable looking 5'10". Hello? What do you think, Pearl? Cleans up pretty good, doesn't it? Just don't pay attention to the cranking mechanism and lever. Will you hurry up? In just a second! Yay! Oh! Can I get like, two of those machines? I wouldn't mind being two inches taller, but who knew that a cartoon might have accidentally predicted the future? If you're not happy with your height, there's a procedure called leg lengthening surgery, and it's surprisingly close to the leg device that Spongebob used. Thought we'd take a look at it today and see the lengths that people go through for vanity. This is Ryan, and he's heading to Las Vegas to add a few more inches to his resume. If I can be taller, I want to be taller. Ryan Wade is 5 feet 7 inches tall. He's come to orthopedic surgeon Dr. Kevin Debbie Parshot for a groundbreaking limb lengthening procedure. After we had given you that additional height, you'd probably be sitting at very close to 5'11". Yeah! Okay. Is this what people do in Vegas? All I saw when I went was deserts, people smoking in hotels, and BTS. I guess this is what people mean when they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Goodbye 5 foot 7 Ryan. Hello new person that has to explain why they're 15% taller than last time. The procedure involves implanting a steel device into the upper bone on both legs. We use the remote control to slowly separate the bone. The body makes new bone to fill in the gap. So I push this- Okay, wait. So you're telling me the way it works is that it breaks your bones? So your bones can grow new bones? What the hell? Are we made out of Play-Doh or something? I've never broken a bone before, so if anyone has ever broken an arm or a leg, is one of your limbs longer than the other one? Please go check for me, I'm, <laughs> I'm morbidly curious. If that's the case, you would have to break the other one to even yourself out. So I push this button and then what happens? Once you push the button, then that's when you start growing. The remote control signals the device to pull the bones apart, one millimeter at a time. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Cool? I'm sorry, but you might want to broaden your horizons a little bit if you think that's cool. Video games are cool. Have you tried things like sports, like cricket? There's also competitive cricket collecting, hiking, all pain-free by the way. I'm just kidding. It's cool in theory, but once that thing starts working, it'll probably lose some of its cool effect. You can tell people that you're basically half transformer. But what happens if the button gets stuck? Or when you have guests over and they think it's a remote for the TV, and suddenly Ryan is 8 feet tall. It just seems like a lot can go wrong. With any invasive cosmetic procedures, there's a chance of complications, not to mention the pain. Why did they make pulling apart the bone like a recipe for bone marrow soup? They were just a bit too casual. The doctor begins by taking precise measurements of Ryan's leg. Next, he drills into the bone, then surgically breaks the bone. He creates a channel in the thigh bone for the implant. 
you can see it kind of going right down the center of the bone. The implanted device is secured with screws that are drilled in above and below the break in the bone. Finally, the remote is tested to ensure the bone is separating. Success! Yeah, the implant worked. Well, that was horrifying. I can respect the fact that Ryan is doing it for himself, and it doesn't seem like his height is drastically affecting his life. I've got another 70 years left on this planet, and I want to enjoy it to the full extent. And this is something since I've been 14 that I've always wanted to do. $75,000 towards getting tall, I'm picking getting tall. 5'7 is a pretty average height for a guy. There's like no pros or cons. You're just kind of there. If you have $75,000 in your pocket and can handle the fact that a machine is basically stretching out your leg bone, then go for it. Just keep that device hidden somewhere safe. Definitely don't leave it laying around on the living room table. It does seem like he's recovering pretty well, and the pain doesn't seem that bad. Hmm, you know what? Maybe I'll look into this in a few years. It was the most painful thing that I've ever gone through in my life. David Wilson of Los Angeles had the same procedure last year. You know what? My height is fine. He was 5'7 and was stretched 2 <laughs> inches to 5'9. <laughs> um, why was that animation so funny looking? I mean, technically, his body was stretched out, but not with Photoshop or with one of those weird Asian filters that make you 80% legs. As my legs got longer, I needed to extend my seat back further so I could have this adjustment room right here. It was kind of cool. And he has encouraging words. It's just kind of cool. That's it? The worst pain in your life for an extra two inches, and the ability to sit farther away from the steering wheel? Okay, to each their own, I guess. I've learned that this procedure is probably not for most of the population. Wearing shoes with heels or fixing your posture can be a good alternative to height surgery. But for some people, typically with guys, height is a really important factor that can affect your quality of life, especially when you're living in a society that views shorter guys as inferior. Would you guys date a shorter guy? No. No? No. I don't date men. No. <laughs> you don't date- Wait, why no? Why- It's just it's weird. weird. It's just weird. Yeah. Right, what about you? Would you ever date a shorter guy? No, because I play basketball. You know what? I get it. If a guy's too short, I might mistake him for the basketball and try to dunk him. I hate when that happens. Hey, you funny and all, but like, you a midget. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. It's the height, but we could be friends. We could, you know, we could kick it, you know. <laughs> you already know what I'm going to say. You know, y'all have to pass. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, you know, <laughs> pass. <laughs> I almost feel bad. I'm pass. <laughs> I'm a pass because I'm kind of tall. I'm a pass because you're my homie. I, I can see over you. This poor guy was set up. They made him stand next to someone who could touch the ceiling if they jumped. That's just gonna make his height stand out more. And wait a second, isn't this girl shorter than him? It's like a mouse calling a hamster too short. It's totally fine to have physical preferences when you're dating. Is it shallow? Yeah, but humans are shallow. There's like... 7 million people in the world, you're bound to find at least one person that doesn't mind the height difference. If you can't find at least one person that doesn't care about height, I hate to break it to you, but your height might not be the problem. That's how our messed up world works, and it's not the end of the world if you don't live up to the beauty standard for height. Have you guys heard of this new trend called Short King Spring? They're being hailed Short Kings. Short men pairing up with much taller women is the hot trend. Think Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, Zendaya and Tom Holland. Wow. We're really just making anything into a trend nowadays, huh? What's next? Tall Queen Fall? No, that just sounds like I want you guys to trip. But with all these shorter male celebrities with tall girlfriends, it's nice to see more of that representation in the media. And it breaks that stereotype where the guy has to be taller and the girl has to be shorter. Zendaya, you're taller than Tom. And it became this, <laughs> this thing. And I thought, Did she's I put this out there. <laughs> Maybe like an inch or two at least. <laughs> People say like, like, how did you guys kiss? It must have been That's so not... difficult. <laughs> when we were doing the Spider-Man screen tests, I mean, you'd have to ask John Watts this question, but every girl that we tested for both roles was taller than me. But yeah, so maybe yeah. that was a decision yeah. John Watts made and something he was aware of and wanted to break the stereotype. Tom Cruise, Joe Jonas, Mr. Zendaya, all of these guys short kings. 
Granted, these guys probably have a net worth that looks like a telephone number, and they're talented, and charming, and good looking. Basically, if you're not tall enough, make sure you have money. No money, no problem. Just pray that you were born with a good looking face and some abs. Didn't come out of the womb with a six pack? No worries, a funny personality is a great disguise. With male beauty standards, there's more room to be flexible. You don't have to be perfect in every single way like female beauty standards. In society, girls can't have any flaws, guys can, but no more than three at a time. So if guys are getting flack for being too short, what happens when a girl is too tall? Society says that if you're taller than the delicate height of 5'6", you might want to stop eating so much calcium to prevent any more growth spurts. Netflix even made a whole movie about dating as a tall girl, and how hard it is supposedly. You think your life is hard? Try being moderately taller than average. You know that really, really tall girl that you go to school with? Would you maybe wanna... Well, that's me. Well, how's the weather up there? Nice sweatpants, Sasquatch. What'd you say to my best friend? Farida, please. Were those supposed to be insults? Those were the most lukewarm bullies that I've ever seen. Girl, you're literally taller than them by a foot. Just step on them. Or play a bit of whack-a-mole. See? Even the comments are pointing it out. Why is she letting them bully her? She can easily drop kick them. You just have to be strong in the face of adversity. Oh, I love it! That's the one. You're perfect. This movie was sort of weird. Girls that are 6 feet tall usually aren't seen that negatively. I'm not really sure why they're treating the main character like she has some sort of disability. I was hoping you'd want to go with me to the homecoming test. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I mean... <laughs> gotcha. Let's face it, Jody, you're the tall girl. If you're tall, conventionally attractive, skinny, and fit into about 60% of the beauty standard, usually you'll be okay. And I don't want to dismiss people's experiences of getting bullied for their height. It was just kind of strange how they made a whole entire movie about being taller than average and treated being a tall girl as a disease. When you're a tall girl, it's, it's the only thing that people see. It's not the only thing I see. Remember the dating struggles between short guys and tall girls? Well, they do bring that up in this movie. What's even more of a mystery is why he's crazy about someone twice his size. Good morning. Why won't guys date me? Is it because I'm too tall? I'll date you. Huh, why is my height such a big deal? Just because I'm six feet tall doesn't mean I'm undateable. I'm shorter than you, and I don't care about your height. Pick me. Choose me. Love me. Dating a guy who's shorter than me would just draw more attention to how much of a freak I am. Wait, but- Is everyone in this school nutrient deficient? This is a pretty big school. You're telling me there's not one single person that goes here that's taller than six feet? Other than her and the foreign exchange student that happens to appear when it's convenient. When I first heard of this movie, I thought it was about someone that was excessively tall. So tall that it actually caused problems for them. Not just because they have to wear men's size shoes. Like if you were closer to 7 feet tall. Like these ladies from TLC's My Giant Life. That's when your height would be more of a problem. The world is not built for people who are six foot seven. Driving a car when you're six foot nine is difficult. Man, your knees way. are hitting the steering wheel. I can't even get my head in. The airplane is is very frustrating. Ow. Wait, I actually never thought about that. Tall people probably have to bend down so much to fit into spaces and avoid hitting their head on the door frame. My neck already hurts from just watching them. I would like to go to prom this year, but if a senior doesn't ask me to prom, then I can't go. Have you asked anyone? I have always told her, you're gonna be tall. That's just life. But if you choose to love yourself, there's no telling what you can oh. do. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. What was that? That was actually the scariest thing I've ever seen. Okay, maybe it wasn't scary, but it caught me off guard. Why are you running? Are you being chased? Is this how I look when I skip a step going up the stairs? Well, at the end of the day, your height will always play a factor in your life, along with your appearance. That's just the way society works right now, but you don't have to let it dictate your life. Like I said, there's more than 7 trillion people in the world. If you can't find someone to date you because of your height, maybe get a book on how to be funny or learn how to make money really fast. <laughs>
Hey, the YouTube algorithm is feeling a bit 5-2 today, and you can help stretch out its bones with a like and a comment on this video. Feeding it engagement will help it grow, and I'll get to show up on your recommended with more fun topics to talk about. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.